Hello, if you're just joining us, this is actually the third and final phase of our 2008 Yamaha R6 engine build. In this one, we're going to pick up with the, uh, the head install, get the timing set, and then we're going to go around and reinstall the clutch, the water pump, and any other pieces that need to be added to the engine to complete it. So if you need to go back and review uh, parts one and two, go ahead and do so when you get caught up and ready to finish it up. Meet me back here for this video and I'll show you how to get it done. So let's get started. Let's go and get our dowels in. Do one last check, make sure all your surfaces are clean. Now let's get out our head gasket. And if you did do a 636 kit, do not use the stock gasket because it's not big enough. So Weiss Co. will sell you the correct one. And last check of the head. <laughs> Don't let your tappets fall out. Everything looks good. Let's close her up. All right. Let's get some bolts on there and get her torqued down. Let's go ahead and get our washer zone. You can do this without a magnet, but it's not easy. The first ones we're going to do are um, one through seven and then number 10. First round, we just take those to 18 foot pounds. And there's 10 right there. Just notice that jump from seven to 10. Now we're going to go back and get eight and nine. Eight and nine go to 22 foot pounds the first time around. All right, the final on these, the one through seven and the number 10. This is going to be 31 foot pounds. Two on the end, their final is 44 foot pounds. The only ones left are just these two on the end five millimeters allens and they're just set to 8.9 foot pounds so we're going to call that nine that's it she is torqued down now all right before we set the cams in let's go ahead and uh, put some assembly lube on all the journals and on top of the tappets so there's no starvation on startup right, let's bring them in okay your exhaust you can identify it because it has this little piece on it All right, let's find our marks. We're at top dead center over here. This is our intake. So we want to bring our timing mark around to right there. Got little eyes in line with the, with the head. Now let's get the exhaust spun over. It's pretty close, but not quite there. Now once that tightens down, that should be it. Let's put on our caps and see where we end up. A little bit more lube. And when you're putting these back on, notice that they have arrows. Should be pointing to the chain. And these have an I and these have an E on them. Kind of go back and forth. Bring it down even. Oh yeah. So we put that tensioner on. That is dead on. So that is her. So let's go ahead and get those uh, caps torqued down. 7.4 foot-pounds is what they're looking for. All right, reset the tensioner, push the piston back in, and then catch it with this collar. When we put it in, this part's going to be facing down. So what you do, tap it, and then that'll release it, and it'll put tension against the, uh, the guide. Let's put just a little bit of Loctite on there. All right, when I rotate this and pop it around, you should hear that tensioner click. There she went. Helped it a little bit. 
All right, all that is feeling right. Let's go around a couple of times, recheck our timing marks just one more time. Top dead center, intake and exhaust. Let's go and get that, uh, that top cover on, the valve cover. Make sure that that rubber gasket is in the groove all the way around and doesn't get pinched. All right, let's get our uh, valve cover bolts in place. All right, before I can actually torque this bolt for that little timing gear, we need to put on the uh, flywheel. A little bit of oil on that bearing surface. There we go. All right, to do this, we need to hold that uh, flywheel in place. So I'm just going to put on a sheave holder. Go ahead and set her up to 52. See if we can get her torqued down. There it is. Since we still have that on there, let's swing around to the other side and go ahead and torque that one down. This one over here is 26. All right, let's get this off. And since we're over here, let's go ahead and uh, get this cover put back together, put that reduction gear in there. All right, when you're putting this back together, I actually want you to put a little bit of this bond inside this little channel where the wire passes through. And the bolts that came out all need to have Loctite reapplied. Chances are if you're rebuilding your R6 motor, you're probably not having to replace this though. This one was damaged, obviously, when this was this bike originally took a spill. Which we never saw. Alright, let's get our dowels back in. Get our gasket in place. Now let's get on that new cover. Now keep in mind there's magnets in there. And uh, try not to get your fingers stuck in there, otherwise it's going to pinch them like you wouldn't believe. Alright, let's go ahead and get that oil cooler back on there. This uh, O-ring's looking a little rough, so we're going to go ahead and replace it. Rotate it around where that tab rests against the block, and that'll get it in the right orientation. The oil cooler nut needs 46 foot-pounds. Let's just keep rotating around. Go ahead and get that pickup back in place. A little bit of Loctite on each one of these. Put some of that bond in here. Hopefully that'll hold in place. Let's get our gasket and uh, then get that outer cover on. Let's go ahead and do the, uh, the water pump. Put a little oil around that O-ring and slide her in there. All right, I do have to move that out of the way. All right, let's get our clutch basket remounted. do not want you to reuse that outer nut so we are going to put on a new one. I'm going to go ahead and put this upper cover back on. Looks like a breather cover is what this thing is. Let's get this water port put back on. It's that uh, part off the front of the block for the cooling system. All right, got our holder in place. Now we got to put 85 foot-pounds on this. All right, I didn't want to have all that tension going against there. It was probably going to damage the tool. So, got a little help here. Let's see if we can put 85 on it. There it is. All right, now we 
just need to stake the end of that bolt. Let's start laying some plates in there. All right, guys, we've already got our, uh, our plates. They've soaked. We've already measured uh, what our heights should be. So basically, I just need to put it together now. And the last friction plate, we want to rotate that by one. Just like that. Put your, uh, that pull tab through. Go and set that in place. Then get those oval washers. Now, I've looked at the uh, springs before, and they were a little bit weak. So we're going to replace those as well. All right, get these started, and then we want to tighten them down kind of in a crisscross pattern until they're bottomed out. And these, believe it or not, only need six foot-pounds. All right, got our dowels in place. Go ahead and get our gasket on. All right, when you're putting this cover on, you want that arrow to point at this dot. So that's the point where it needs to grab the end of that pull rod. So once you got that in position, let's see if we can get her to line up. All right, she is in there. With the new clutch, you do want to give it a little bit of time to bed in properly, to break in, so to speak. So don't go hog wild on it straight out of the box. Give the plates a chance to go through a couple of heat cycles then romp on it. All right, with our clutch finished up, let's go ahead and get a starter on it. The only thing holding on the starter are just a couple of uh, eight millimeter bolts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the crankshaft position sensor put back on. All right, next, I don't wanna send it out without plugs in it because I hate sending out an open engine. So we're gonna go ahead and put a set of plugs in it. All right, let's go ahead and torque those plugs. The spec calls for 9.6. So I'm going to set it to 10 foot-pounds. All right, guess what, folks? Down to the last thing. A little oil on that O-ring. Snug it down, and that's it. Well, all right, guys, there you have it. One 2008 Yamaha R6 engine torn all the way down to the crankshaft and then reassembled with a few goodies along the way. Well, listen, if you need any of the parts that we use to build this, why don't you find us at partzilla.com, and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments just leave them in the section below and i'll do my best to answer them but until the next time we just want to say thanks for watching